Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Today, we have a species profile on a bird that is very confusing to a lot of people, especially backyard uh, bird feeder people. They, When these things show up at their feeders, they often confuse a lot of people. So um, I, my inspiration for doing this program comes from this picture that was sent in uh, and, and on the Mark's community page, Mark's Backyard Birds community page. If you're not on that, you should join. But the uh, this bird doesn't look like a lot of the other birds. It's, not, it's atypical for uh, a lot of the birds that feed at bird feeders during the winter. That's because it's a member of the warbler family. And warblers are a group of very colorful birds. Well, we're going to get to that because this one's not so colorful. But the warblers are typically insect-eating birds that uh, can subsidize on berries uh, in the winter months and in fall. But most of our warblers are neotropic migrants. That means they go to the tropics during the coldest and uh, the part of winter. And there are some that do winter along the Gulf Coast and, and the, the southeastern states and in the, the southwest. Um, but this bird is very unique in that it uh, it can winter further than most of the other warblers, and uh, it is also one of the earliest to return. It's usually the first warbler we see in the spring and one of the last warblers that we see in the fall and winter, and it is the yellow rumped warbler. And there's a lot of reasons, again, that it's confusing. One is it's showing up at bird feeders, and you don't usually see them as, in, in itself is, is a little bit confusing, but it, another reason that it gets confusing is because it looks so different. When you try to look this bird up in your field guide at times a year, if you see this bird in at this time of year, whenever it's in its fall and winter plumage, and then you, you see the same bird in the spring, and the males look like this, they're very brightly colored, beautiful, beautiful birds, um, then that's confusing into itself. So First off, I thought that, you know, we should talk about the yellow rumped warbler and its two different distinctive plumages, the breeding plumage on the left and the winter plumage on the right. And I love the picture on the right because it tells you where it got the name yellow rumped warbler from. The, it does have a yellow rump, and you quite see you see that quite easily when it's flitting around in the trees and the, the wings uh, you know, separate enough off of the rump. I know in that first picture when it was sitting on the bird feeder, the rump was covered, so it was very hard to see that. But that's where it gets its name for the yellow rumped warbler. Well, another reason that it's confusing is because I know you guys out west uh, say, wait a minute, our birds have yellow throats instead of white throats. And yes, uh, these are two different races of the same birds. They used to be considered separate species. And I think one day they will again be separate species. But as of right now, ornithologically speaking, we have to say there are two different races of yellow rumped warbler. The, the one on the right is the Audubon's warbler, which is the one with the yellow throat uh, and, and, and less white in the face. And it is the Western counterpart. And they it range very far north in the West. And the one on the left, which I grew up with, is the Myrtle warbler. And I will talk about where it got its name. But you can see that their range is that, that they all over North America. Very, very uh, a widespread warbler. Um, the breeding range is the orange. So uh, if, if these were two different species maps, then you would have the myrtle warbler is in the eastern, basically two thirds or half of the country, the Audubons to the Rocky Mountains and west and way up into Alaska. Uh, but then they winter way down in the southeast. So Audubon's name obviously comes from John James Audubon, uh, the, the great ornithologist and, and uh, naturalist who named many of the birds in this country. But the myrtle warbler, where does the name myrtle warbler comes from? Well, we know that a lot of warblers, you know, they eat, they, they're they going to eat insects all of them, and they can, but they do eat berries. This is a, a myrtle warbler or a, a yellow rump in our area in fall migration, eating poison ivy berries. And this, poison ivy berries are very important food sources uh, for birds in the winter, fall and winter months. But 
where it re the name Myrtle Warbler comes from. And one of the things that makes this warbler so unique is the wax myrtle or the bayberry bushes and along the Gulf Coast and the, at the Atlantic seaboard up and down the wax myrtle evergreen bushes that are along the coast uh, are loaded with this fruit uh, in the winter months. And myrtle warblers or yellow rump warblers are unique in that they can, they have the enzymes in their stomachs that can break down the wax uh, of these berries. Now the birds can't eat them because they are waxy coated They're very and, and they have the, that wax in them, which is kind of hard to digest for a lot of animals, but for birds that have evolved with like the myrtle warbler to, to digest wax and get energy from wax, that enables them to survive in the, these conditions down there that, you know, they, it, it's warm a lot during the winters in the southeast, but there are cold stretches too. And the, uh, the presence of all these myrtle bushes, and these wax myrtle or bayberry bushes. And the, when I we would go on, on ornithology class field trips to coastal North Carolina in the winter, there would be hundreds and thousands of these uh, yellow rump warblers in these wax myrtle bushes. We'd walk through there and we would make jokes that they would carry off you know, ornithology students, you know, off into the, you know, there were so many of them uh, down there and they, they really do winter in, in very, very high numbers. So, uh, but one of the things that we're seeing and, and that it, it, from that, I think is them starting to show up at bird feeders and getting acclimated to eating mainly holeless seeds uh, at, at sunflower chips and suet, I think uh, uh, at feeders and we're, we're getting more pictures. And of course, uh, we're getting reports from uh, really up the eastern seaboard is where a lot of my pictures come from. Yes, in the in the southeast, we're in Florida and in Georgia and places like that. We you see them coming a little more commonly because there's more of them there. But all the way up into the uh, the, the eastern seaboard, and here's one. I know this picture was taken uh, eating mealworms going into a bluebird feeder, a mealworm feeder um, in New Jersey. And this is in the winter, so these they they are they do can survive these winters up uh, going up the eastern seaboard like that as long as these wax myrtles are around that they they're used to eating. So you have the myrtle warbler and the Audubon's warbler both together known as the yellow rumped warbler. And keep your eyes out for them in uh, at your feeders eating and but then once those insects become prevalent then they're mainly going to be eating those and they're going to nest way uh, further north up into the boreal forest of Canada mainly. And they're going to go, that's where they're going to be all summer. Then they'll start coming back down again in the fall. Um, you may see them at your feeder, but mainly it's in winter when you're going to get a myrtle warbler to come in and, and eat some uh, sunflower seeds, sunflower hearts, uh, dry mealworms, uh, suet, things like that. So the myrtle warbler, the Audubon's warbler all together, the yellow rump, great topic for our program, a unique species really. Uh, and uh, around here, we're, gonna, we're starting to see them now and their numbers will increase over the next month or so for us. So hope you enjoyed the program. If you like that species profile, you have ideas for more, send them in because we want to talk about what you want to talk about. So give us a like, give us a share. If you haven't uh, subscribed yet, please do and ring that bell so you know when I'm on next. Until next time, let's talk birds.